Shalom. All praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakar Kwadash. Double honors to my elders, the apostles of Great Millstone. Those are the men that taught me the truth of the Bible through the Holy Spirit. And Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakar Kwadash, Brakatham, to the elect of Israel that scattered across the four corners of the globe. Now, um, I just got home from work and um, I came across this article from www.rt.com. And as I was uh, reading through this article, my blood started to boil and I started to get angry. So I thought, you know what, let me just transfer that energy, all right, that, uh, that energy that I was getting from reading this article into a lesson, okay, and, you know, <clears throat> and uh, help edify the elect of Israel um, that are scattered across the four corners of the globe. And when I say Israel, I'm referring to us so-called blacks, Latinos and Native Americans because we collectively make up the 12 tribes of Israel. Right, we're Hebrew Israelites, and being a Hebrew Israelite is not a religion. What it is is a nationality, and the Bible, the Holy Bible, is our heritage. Okay, that's our history in that Bible and our future. Okay, <laughs> um, but what we're going to read about here in this article is how Esau, Edom, and when I say Esau or Edom, again, I'm referring to a, a nation of people that being the biblical Edomites, which the biblical Edomites are you so called white people, right? And we've discovered that us Israelites have discovered that through the Holy Spirit. And through uh, the grace of Yahweh Bashmah Shai, who you ignorantly call God and Jesus Christ, setting up men here on earth to teach us the truth of the Bible and what's what according to the Bible. Now, what we're going to read about is how um, these Edomites are basically trying to run away from their history of slavery, their stealing of you know this land that you know is America, and um, ultimately their wickedness. Okay, and we're living in a time where Esau can't hide. All right, as a matter of fact, let's start there. In the book of Jeremiah, the what's that, the 49th chapter? Because um, through the Spirit I said hide. Um, I believe it's verse 10, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, this is Jeremiah chapter 49, verse 10. And this is the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, speaking through his prophet Jeremiah concerning you Edomites, all right? Concerning you so called white people or you so called Caucasians. Okay, it says, but I have made Esau bear. Now Esau, his name was changed to Edom, right? You can read about that in, um, what's that, the book of Genesis, the 36th chapter, where it says Esau is Edom. Esau being the wicked of the Bible, Malachi chapter 1, verse 4. Esau became the progenitor of the Edomites, right? And the Edomites are a nation of people that still exist to this very day. And we're living in a time where Yahweh Marshmallow Shire is exposing you devils for who you are. Right, because you got the world thinking that you're so called white, that you're so called Caucasians, when in actual fact you're the wicked of the Bible, you're the Edomites of the Bible. And we're living in that time where who you ignorantly call God, who we know is Yahweh, uh, alongside his heavenly son, our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai, is exposing you, man, exposing your history, exposing who you are as a people. And he's doing that through the Holy Spirit and through their men here on earth, beginning with the apostles and the elders and the men of Great Millstone, all right, the true servants of Yahweh Bashmah Shai. It says, but I have made Esau bear, I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. The reason why he's not going to be able to hide himself, because again, Yahweh Bashmah Shai has put his Holy Spirit upon his true servants in these last days to, to go out there on the highways and byways or on the street corners and expose you so-called white people as it pertains to the Holy Bible, all right? Letting the world know that you're not white people, but you're actually, in fact, uh, the Edomites, okay? The biblical Edomites. And we're also using, you know, the internet, YouTube as a platform to expose you to, right? Which you can read about that in um, the book of Psalms, the 19th chapter, if I'm not mistaken. But it says, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled and his brethren and his neighbors and he is not. Now, the reason why it says he is not is because um, after a thousand years of hardcore slavery, right? In the kingdom of heaven, when Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly refers to as Jesus Christ, when Yahweh Shai is ruling alongside his people, the Israelites, our so-called blacks, Latinos and Native Americans, when we're set up in righteousness and ruling this world according to the law, statutes, and commandments, we're going to put you into slavery for a thousand years and then after that thousand years, they're going to be destroyed. Okay, and that's pursuant to the book of Obadiah, the 18th verse. The Heavenly Father, Yahweh, is going to destroy you as a people and you're no longer going to exist. Right, and you can read more about that in the, what's that, the book of Job, the 20th chapter, where it speaks about how he shall fly away as a dream. So that's a prophecy that's going to be fulfilled in the, in the future. After a thousand years of hardcore slavery. Underneath us Israelites. Okay. So, um, you know, since I brought that scripture out. Now we can go back to this article and start off this lesson 
properly through the spirit. It says, you mean slavery? Uproar after conservative think tank says free trade gave US economic edge. Right, and then they got a picture of him, you know, Jake on the slave ships. Uh, as a reference point, you can go to the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter and the 68th verse, right, concerning the, the, um, the curse that was going to fall upon the true Hebrew Israelites. Again, our so called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans going into Egypt again on, on ships. That's a um, prophecy that, that came to pass, all right? Our so called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans were um, shipped across the, the globe on cargo slave ships. You know, mainly the southern kingdom of Israel. Again, our so-called Negroes, uh, so-called West Indians and so-called Haitians. Um, and then it goes on to say life-size sculptures of enslaved Africans, which it should really say enslaved Israelites, are a part of a 70-foot replica of a slave ship featured in the core exhibit at the Detroit's New Museum of African American History. So any brothers that's actually out there in Detroit, you know, you can head over there. And, uh, you know, if the spirit be on you, you can do a lesson there and bring out more edification for the elect. But it goes on to say, how did the U.S. transform from an overseas colony into an economic powerhouse? When in actual fact, what it should really say is, how did these Edomites, these so-called white people or these so-called Caucasian people or these so-called Europeans transform from an overseas colony into an economic powerhouse. That's what it should really say. But we know, you know, these uh, devils are not going to expose themselves like that. That's why we're set up, right, through the Holy Spirit. You know, the servants of the Lord. It says, a prominent think tank says free markets are to thank, but skeptics quickly point to the vast amounts of forcibly seized land and human chattel. Now, the forcibly seized land that they're referring to is this land that we know as the Americas, right? Primarily North America. And if you don't know, right, this... This land that you know is America or, you know, North America, Central America and South America. This land was primarily inhabited by the Northern Kingdom of Israel, right? You so-called Latinos and Native Americans. And it was stolen from you by these Edomites. Okay, and we can read about how you inhabited this land when you go to the book of, what's that? Second Ezra, the 13th chapter and the 40th verse on down. All right, it speaks about how the 10 tribes of Israel would go to another land, man. All right, and try and keep the laws, statutes and commandments of Yahweh Marshmallow Shai. And again, that's pertaining onto you so called Latinos and Native Americans, right? That's your history. So then it goes on to say human chattel. Now, the human chattel that they're referring to is us so called Negroes, okay? That these Edomites, these so called white people, stole from places like Spain, Portugal, different parts of Europe like England, Scotland, Ireland, uh, you know, and then they, you know, stole us from the west coast of Africa, uh, primarily places like Nigeria, Ghana. Um, Sierra Leone, Cameroon, so on and so forth, okay? So this is speaking about us Israelites together, right? And this is actually, um, this is biblical, what we're reading about here, because when we go to the book of uh, Jeremiah, when we go to the next chapter, the 50th chapter, let's see here, let's go to Jeremiah 50, and the point is in verse 33. Um, the heavenly father, Yahweh, through his prophet Jeremiah prophesied about how us Israelites were going to be oppressed together as a people. And it wasn't speaking about ancient Babylon. It wasn't speaking about uh, Nineveh. It wasn't speaking about uh, ancient Egypt. No, it was speaking about this place that you know as America. Okay. So this is Jeremiah 50 verse 33. It says, Thus saith the Lord, whose name is Yahweh of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah. Now, the reason why it says the children of Israel and the children of Judah is because in the days of old, our, our nation, the nation of Israel, uh, was split up into two kingdoms, right? You had the kingdom of Israel or the northern kingdom, which again consisted of you so-called Latinos and Native Americans. And then you had the southern kingdom, which consists of our so-called Negroes, right? The so-called Negro tribes, so-called Negroes or blacks, uh, West Indians and Haitians, right? So it's speaking about us collectively here, the 12 tribes of Israel. It says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel... And the children of Judah were oppressed together. Now, bear in mind, this is the prophet Jeremiah, you know, seeing this vision and writing this down. And this was around, like, let's say 600 BC or 655 BC in ancient Babylon. OK. And at that time, it was only the southern kingdom. Right. The children of Judah that were being oppressed. Right. At that time. So this is speaking about a whole new vision, a whole new captivity. OK. It's speaking about this place that, you know, is America. This is where 
our so-called blacks, Latinos and Native Americans have been oppressed together as a people, okay? The whole nation. It says the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together and all that took them captives held them fast. They refused to let them go. And that's why we're here until this very day because we haven't been released from this captivity. But guess what? The good news is that we're about to be released, all right? We're about to be delivered one third of our people by our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, upon his return. Okay, you can read more about that in the book of Matthew, the 24th chapter and the 31st verse. All right, so that's the point there. Let's go back to the, to the article. Now we should have an understanding of, uh, you know, where it says forcibly seize land and human chattel. All right, this is speaking about the Israelites being oppressed here together in America. So I'm going to read this paragraph again. It says, how did the U.S. transform an overseas colony into an economic powerhouse? A prominent think tank says free markets are to thank, but skeptics quickly point to the vast amounts of forcibly seized land and human chattel. All right. And this forcibly seized land, we can read about that in the Bible. Right? As a matter of fact, let's go to the, um, what's that? the book of Job, the 24th chapter real quick. And I believe the point is in verse two. Yep, this is Job chapter 24, verse 2. It says, some remove the landmarks. They violently take away flocks and feed thereof, all right? And this was written thousands of years ago. And it's beautiful because Yahweh Bashmael Shai has given us the understanding of what this verse is actually speaking about, all right? It's speaking about you so-called white people stealing land, or primarily stealing our land, all right? The, the land of us Hebrew Israelites, primarily out there in the land of Israel today. You stole that land from us, all right? You forced us to flee away into the interiors of Africa and different parts of, you know, Europe during the 70 AD, you know, during 66 to 70 AD, I should say. And then you stole our land over here in the Americas, right, where the Northern Kingdom was dwelling for a certain period of time until you came over. So it says some removed the landmarks and who stole uh, this landmark that we know today as North America, Central America and South America from the so-called Native Americans, from the so-called um, Seminole Indians from the so-called Mexicans, which are all the tribes of Israel. Who stole that land? It was you so-called white people, man, right? You Edomites. It says some remove the landmarks, they violently take away flocks and feed thereof because the way you got this land was through your blessing, the sword, right? Read, what's that? Genesis 27 verse 40. And you read about how your forefather Esau was blessed with the sword. And the modern day sword, you know, in terms of uh, how you took this land would be the Gatling gun, all right? And you've done it through your smooth words. You know, read, what's that? Psalms 55 verse 20, verse 21 on down. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. Meaning war was in these Edomites' mind when they stole this land and took our people down as a, as a nation, man. Okay? It says they violently take away flocks and feed her off. Right? So, hey man, everything's coming together beautifully through the Holy Spirit. You know, through the power and grace of Yahweh Bashmael Shai. So let's move on to this next paragraph. It says, in a tweet promoting an article that compares gross domestic product of several U.S. metro areas to entire countries, um, the American Enterprise Institute, AEI, praised the ingenuity of American capitalism, right? And then they got like a little illustration of, uh, you know, the GDP, so on and so forth. But I'm not going to go into that. Let's just read their tweet. This is from AEI, all right, which is a, a prominent think tank out there one of Esau's uh, think tanks. It says, free markets, free trade, and capitalism propelled the US from a minor colony to a global economic superpower and the world's largest economy with dozens of metro areas that produce equivalent to the GDP of some of the world's largest countries. So as you can see here, you've got this so-called prominent think tank, right? You know, headed by these Edomites and they're completely omitting you know, how um, America was so-called, you know, made great, if you will, for lack of a better way of saying it. It was really made great off of the backs and blood of the Israelites, our so-called Black Latinos and Native Americans, man. Right. And that's why it says what it says here in the book of, um, what's that, the book of Habakkuk. Let's go there real quick. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 12. It says, woe to him that buildeth a town with blood, which the word woe in itself represents destruction. It says, woe to him that buildeth a town with blood. So this is actually speaking about destruction coming onto Edomites because the way you built up America was through the blood, sweat and tears of us Israelites, all right? Us so-called Blacks, Latinos and Native Americans. It says, and establisheth a city by iniquity. And that's how you've um, built this place up, right? Through your sin and through your wickedness. Sin upon sin. 
because you're not upholding the laws such as the commandments of Yahweh Bashmi al Shai. You're transgressing the laws on a day to day basis. That's why you've got homosexuals running around America, you know, at an all time high. That's why you've got uh, gays and lesbians, pedophiles, bestiality out here. And that's how he's established this wicked um, country, man, America, through his wickedness. Right? So let's go back. Um, let's read on. It says, Many Americans were not convinced, countering that a fondness for land grabbing under false pretenses and slavery could have had a role in US economic development as well. You forgot free labor, free land, and free resources, more commonly known as slavery of Africans, which you should really say Hebrew Israelites because we're not Africans, right? There's no such thing as an African. What you do have is Hamites living in the land of Ham, right? Which today that continent is known as Africa. It says, more commonly known as slavery of Africans and robbing and murdering the indigenous people of North America. <laughs> so let's go back to uh, Jeremiah, the 50th chapter. Let's, let's read uh, Jeremiah 50, verse 33, once again. You know, and that's why uh, the prophet Habakkuk said what he said in the book of um, what, Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 3 on down. At the end, it shall speak and not lie. Well, we're living in a time where these prophecies are speaking loud and clear, all right, unto the elect of the nation of Israel. It says, Thus saith the Lord, whose name is Yahweh of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together, and all that took them captives held them fast. They refused to let them go. Now, let's go back to the article and read this paragraph. It says, You forgot free labor, free land, and free resources. More commonly known as slavery of Africans, which again, you know, this should really say Israelites, and robbing and murdering the indigenous people of North America. All right. Again, at this point, this is where you go to Jeremiah 50 verse 33. The children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together here in America. All right. Let's just, you know, see some of these um, tweets and then close out. So this is from Hooper and Curry. It says... No matter how much you try to pretty it up or whatever literary eloquence you apply, it was still the nightmare of slavery that made America what it is today. Don't sit here and try to rewrite history. <laughs> uh, this is John Colbert. It says slavery, 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 so on and so forth, right? Um, let's see. Well, that's basically it, you know. What I will do, you know, Lord willing, is leave the link for this article in the description box. But there you have it, man. All right. Um, Esau, pursuant to the book of uh, Jeremiah, the 49th chapter and the 10th verse, the heavenly father, Yahweh Bashmah Shai, is exposing Esau, man. Right. Not only by his servants, his prophets. Right. Again, us here at Great Millstone, beginning with the, with the apostles and the elders and the men on down. But he's, he's also got, you know, ordinary people out there that are exposing these Edomites for their treachery, for their wickedness that they um, done unto the Israelites, man. All right, so bracket Yahweh Bashmah was shy for that, man. I'm going to close out by giving all praises, honors, and glory to Yahweh Bashmah was shy by Hashem Rakak Wadash. Double honors to my elders, the apostles of Great Millstone, the men that taught me the truth of the Bible through the Holy Spirit, and Yahweh Bashmah Yahweh was shy by Hashem Rakak Wadash, bracket thumb to the elect of Israel. Shalom.